welcome to our seventh annual Egg Venture Business Plan presentations. Uh, we're going to be your MCs tonight, or this afternoon, I guess. My name is Ireland Gad, and I'm an, a first year Egg Biz student, and I'm in the production stream, and I'm from Moose Jaw, and I come from a fourth generation grain farm. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming out. I'm uh, Seamus Gallagher. I'm in her class. We're both in the production stream. And we're really excited you came out today. How many of you in the audience have ever written a complete business plan? These, wow, good job. <laughs> These 34 Ag Biz students you're going to see this afternoon each have taken a business from a concept to a comprehensive and professional business plan. We hope you enjoy your time this afternoon as our students give you a snapshot of their innovative ideas. We hope you pique an interest so that you come to join us at Spurs after the presentations to talk more about the plans. Before we get started, we'd like to give an Indigenous welcome. So, we are gathered here today on traditional Tree 6 territory and Region 2 of the Métis people. At Lakeland College, we acknowledge that Indigenous people are the first people of our country and we must respect the history and roots of the nation. We would also ask that you only enter or exit the theatre when no one is presenting on stage. We also ask that you please shut off your cell phones or turn them on to silent mode. Feel free to take pictures or flash free photography to capture some of your favorite stuff on stage. Um, the washrooms are out the door to our left and the closest mustard point is the parking lot in front of Alumni Hall. In an effort to keep within the time limits, we'll be working with a limit of two questions per presentation. We'd like to welcome our guest judges. Mabin Grindy is an educator at heart and she has a passion for creativity and innovation and is Lakeland's faculty development coordinator. She has a strong agricultural background. Having grown up on a farm, raising three boys with her husband on their farm just outside of Viking, Alberta. Our second guest judge is no other than Tracy Quinton, who is the acting agriculture dean here at Lakeland College. Tracy has an extensive background in agriculture and the education industry and is looking forward to seeing the present presentations today. Um, our judges will also give three awards based on the following, which are the piece of pie. This is awarded to the business the judge would most like to be a part of. And then there's takes the cake. Awarded to the most outstanding presentation. And then there's also outside of the box. Awarded to the most unique presentation. So in saying all that, we have our first business plan, and that is Encounters with Agriculture, and that's presented by Taylin Peterson and Christelle Doidoy. Taylin grew up on a mixed operation outside of Hodgeville, Saskatchewan, where she found her passion for all things agriculture. She has always been a part of the farm and wants to bring more awareness to agriculture and show how important it is to everyone. And that's what led her and Christelle to come up with Encounters with Ag. Christelle is an international student from the Philippines who loves to know more about how important ag is to the world because she knows in her country farmers aren't acknowledged well enough and she wants that to change. That's why Encounter to Ag will benefit every country. Hi kids, <laughs> at heart. Who here still feels like they've got a kid inside their heart somewhere? <laughs> Who here are passionate with kids? Well, you guys are hired. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to Encounters, Encounters with, with Egg, Egg, a summer camp based all around agriculture. My name is Tylin Peterson. I am the marketing and customer relations lead at, on our team. I'm Christelle Lude, our operations and finance lead. Our project need. We are here today to talk to you, Lakeland College, about a partnership with Encounters with Ag. We believe that with your dedication to education and agriculture and your wonderful location here in Vermilion, Alberta, we would be able to have a successful summer camp. With the location, we, you have everything we need right here. There are dorm rooms for our kids to stay in, a cafeteria to entertain and feed our guests, as well as the farm, 
where the everything agriculture that we need is right outside our door. We also need connections. We have a few connections with Ag in the Classroom, but we feel that with a partnership with you, we'd be able to expand our name even further. So for our goals, our goals are understanding how important Ag is. We want the kids and the youth to know how important Ag in our world, most especially the new, the new generations that they don't have any idea of how important Ag in our lives. And second is engagement of the youth in the world of ag, because we all know that experience is the best teacher. And the third one would be molding the youth for the future. We might not know that these kids who is joining our summer camps will be one of our future leaders. For our customers, we're aiming for ages 9, 9 to 13 and urban and rural areas, and we're also aiming for Alberta and Saskatchewan for the provinces, but those who are willing to join from outside these provinces are more welcome. And also those people who are interested in agriculture, just like me who didn't grow up in a, in a farm, who's really interested in agriculture and wants to know more about agriculture. For our activities during the camp, we have decided that each day of our camp will be based on a different part of agriculture. So for our day one, we're planning to take the kids for a dairy tour and we're planning to take them to our chisery near the town. And then day two will be all about crops and grains where our main focus will be building your own burger. We'll have the kids grind up the wheat to make the flour and then from that flour be able to make the buns. We also want to go to local greenhouses and gardens to pick out our vegetables like tomatoes and um, lettuce. And for day three, we're planning to bring them to industry. We're planning to have them an Ag Society tours that it's not just about the field, that um, agriculture is, sorry, that agriculture is just uh, uh, revolving around the field, but also around, outside the field and also for the local um, businesses around the town. And then day four for our final day will be livestock, where we'll take the kids on farm tours in the area just to show them how cattle and other livestock is raised. Our marketing. Like I've mentioned before, we have a little bit of a connection with egg in the classroom. And from there, we would tell the kids that they don't only have to experience one day of agriculture, but they could experience a whole week. We also have Facebook and Instagram pages where we will put a little bit of money aside each month to do targeted posts to certain areas. We would also like to get involved in community centers like rinks and that's where we would put posters and brochures and maybe even sponsorships. Most of our marketing most likely will be word of mouth just from kids coming to our camp and then hopefully loving it, going home, telling their friends about it and then coming back next year. For our financials, for year one, we're down to 16%. For our ROI, since we just started a business and we're planning to have a lot of supplies to provide for our summer comps. And for year two, we're up to 69% on our ROI since uh, we have a lot of sponsorships coming in and we also have government grants. For year three, as you can see, we're down to 31% since we are thinking of uh, more manpower and more bu buying more equipment to use for our summer comp. And we're also planning to buy a new bus for the kids and for the tour around the town and around the campus. And you can see that our ROIs here are fluctuating since we are not aiming just for a huge profit, but we're also aiming for awareness and for education for the youth about the world of egg. Our competition. The main two competitions we have here in Alberta is 4-H Camp Alberta and Pioneer Camp Alberta. Both of these camps offer very competitive rates when it comes to price per person coming. For example, the Pioneer Camp, they price their camp at around $390 to $400 per person. And we want to make sure at Encounters with Egg that we keep our price as low as possible so that anyone who wants to know about agriculture can come. So we have priced our camp at $370 per person. Also with our pricing, we are offering a family discount where if you sign up with more than just one person at a time, you would get a discount. And then also a friend bundle where if you refer a friend to our camp, 
then you would get a discount on your admissions. With the location, both of these camps are located on the west side of Alberta, making it difficult for those um, throughout Alberta to make it to the camp. So if we were to have it here in Vermilion, it's very central to both Saskatchewan and Alberta, making it easy for anyone who wants to come to join us at our camp. And with the activities, the 4-H camp, you have to be a 4-H member in order to attend. And then with the Pioneer Camp, you ha it's more based around horses and learning to ride horse. But at Encounters with Egg, we want to bring every aspect of agriculture in so that we can expose the kids to everything they need. And with that, we hope you take into consideration how many youth we would be affecting by putting on this agriculture summer camp together. Thank you for listening, and the floor is now open for questions. Yes. Can you teach where the burger comes from? Kind of. <laughs> the question was if we're going to teach them where the burger comes from. We'll definitely show them, but we won't get too into it because, you know, you don't want to scar the kids. Oh. Oh. So the question was, uh, how many camper, campers are we expecting to come? Um, we're planning for 40 kids for the first three years so that uh, we can have our mentors for like eight, uh, eight. We have eight mentors for each kids for like 10 kids, each mentors. And for the next year after, after that, we're planning to have maybe around 60 to uh, 80 kids. We are hoping to have about five campers per counselor. So, yeah, I don't know what the math is. Thank you, Tylin and Christelle. Coming up, we got Slomp F Farm Dairy Expansion with Ethan Slomp and Matthew Mason of. Ethan is from Pitcher Butte, Alberta, and is born and raised on a mixed farm. After school, he plans to go back to the farm. He is very passionate about agriculture and is excited for the opportunity to become a producer. Mason grew up on a grain farm in Peace River, Alberta, and he is looking forward to going back to his family farm and bring the things he's learned at Lakeland College to his family operation. Hey, I hope everyone's having a good day. Um, my name's Ethan, and uh, I'm going to be talking about the new technology, which is the robots that we're going to be putting in on my farm at home, and I'll let my partner introduce himself. I'm Matthew Mazenov. So what we need for our project is we need to be able to produce milk efficiently and effectively, and we've decided that the best way to do this is to install robots into our farm. We've decided to go with five Lely A5 robots. And here's a picture of one up there. And we're gonna be improving our operation through new technology. We're improving this through giving, being able to read somatic cell counts right away, instantly through the robot. We'll also give our cows free access through the barn to give more to be able to exhibit more of their natural behaviors. And we'll also give them the opportunity to be milked at any time, whether it's two in the morning, four in the afternoon, or any time in between. The cows can go whenever they want. We'll also have the option for a sort pen. So if we need to sort them off and breed them or treat them or move them, that's the best option for them. So for our financials, these are based on 
just the uh, increase in revenue and expenses from the expansion. Uh, in our first year, we'd look at around 230,000 in revenue and 160,000 in expenses for a net income of $70,000 and an ROI of 30%. And then in our second year, we're looking at just shy of $300,000 in revenue and just shy of 180,000 in expenses for a net income of $115,000 and an ROI of 40%. These financials are only based on the difference between our parlor milking and our robots. So these are added revenue expenses and net income. So for our marketing, we decided to do an Instagram and we'll be using our Instagram to help educate the public and our consumers about the Lely A5 robots and just what goes on at Slomp Farms from day to day, because it's a good thing to know uh, for the consumers to know what's going on at our farms. We'll also have the opportunity through the Instagram and social media accounts to communicate with other producers. And if we have any issues that we don't know how to fix with our robot, or if other producers have issues that we've came across, we can help them fix those. And in the second picture on the right here, we show the location of our farm in relation to the nearest town and also to our cheese plant. And this is because we sell our milk there every two days due to the supply management system, which helps us get a consistent good price for our milk and we're, we're able to sell it every time. Uh, here we have two graphics showing our labors, labor savings and our quality gains that we'll receive from the robot when compared to a parlor. On the left, it shows that the, this example of a farm used to need 66 man hours per day on their farm to operate. And after they installed robots, they're down to 36 hours a day, as well as um, they need less cows to fill their quota. The cows are able to milk, be milked whenever they want to be milked. And we've seen production increases and lower somatic cell counts. And the right is pretty much the same story except the, the daily labor savings are quite a bit higher. And it also shows that you get, before you would get a thousand liters per man hour worked on the farm. And then after it was over 2,600 man hours or liters per man hour. And you can show that the quality and the bacteria in the milk has been significantly, significantly improved. Our customers, so based on the statistics that we've shown so far, we're able to become more sustainable on our farm. Our cows are more efficient because just by installing a simple robot milking system, we're able to produce more for less cost and get a higher profit. This will help everything with the three pillars of sustainability from people, planet to product or profit. And I think if we utilize the social media aspect we can really show off how sustainable farms actually are. Do we have any questions? Uh, we will be selling cows for right now. Any other questions? Yep. Uh, right now, the market's pretty high, and we're just going to wait for a dip. And then we'll also look for a potential expansion into a sixth robot as well. But right now, it's just not financially viable. Our next business plan is TNL Agriculture Tech, and this is presented by Thomas Locke and Luke Reed. Thomas comes from central Alberta, where he and his family moved from Denmark in 2012. He recently started a custom farming operation, and once he has done his second year of ag business, he plans on going home to continue growing the operation. Luke comes from southern Saskatchewan, where he grew up working on his small family farm. Once he graduates, he plans on going back to the farm.
Hello, we are TNL AgriTech. My name is Tom Slock. And I'm Luke Reed. Have you ever had grain spoil or go bad in the bin? If any of you have, you know it can be quite costly. For example, a 2,000 bushel bin with $19 canola in it, this could cost you around $40,000. And 2,000 bushel bins are even small in today's figures. So a 6,000 bushel bin with $19 canola, this can cost you over $110,000. I will be taking care of the marketing and sales. I'll look after the product installation and servicing. Thomas and I will both look after our finances. So what our product does, it'll track the moisture, heat, and capacity in the bin, and it'll send it to an app on your phone. And if there's anything that goes astray in your bin, the app will send a notification, and you'll be able to do whatever you have to do about it, whether that be take a load out or turn the fan on or whatever you have to do. And if anyone during the harvest season, they've been combining, they know that the trucking is one of the most important parts. If your truck stops, the whole operation will stop. So with our product, we believe that it'll be efficient during harvest because you'll know exactly how much is in your bin when you have to move bins. And also sometimes bins get underfilled and this is not efficient. So with ours, you'll know exactly what's happening. Our mission at TNL AgriTech, we strive to offer the most advanced bin tracking technology. Our project need, we need, me and Luke both have lots of knowledge behind marketing and sales, as well as customer relations, and we are looking for somebody to help design and bring the technology together. So the logic behind our invention is, like I mentioned earlier, during harvest time, if you run into any issues, as well as during seeding. If you're seeding and you need to know how much grain you have left in the bin so you know how far you can go, this will help with that. As well as since we attended Lakeland College, we found out that you got to know your inventory year end. So this is quite important. It'll help your finances and your account will not get mad at you, hopefully. <laughs> as well as we believe there's technology brought to all other areas of the farm so far, your sprayer, your combine, your drill, everything else, but it is lacking in the bin yard. Our marketing. We'll be using trade shows across Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and British Columbia. We'll be showing how our probes work in different conditions, such as warm conditions, wet conditions, as well as the dry conditions. We will be using radios during the harvest and seeding as the farmers will be in the cab. We will be using cold calls in our spare time to get a one-on-one -on -one with the farmers themselves. We'll be using word of mouth and we'll be encouraging this by giving our clients a one year free trial of our app. We will also be using the online advertisements such as Kijiji, Facebook, Instagram, as well as the Western producer. Our advantage over our competitors. With the new satellite technology, we are able to get into places that I've never been able to reach before. Me and Luke are located in central Alberta as well as southern Sask, and we will be able to get across most of Western Canada. We have lots of connections through Lakeland College all across Canada, which is a great advantage for us. As well, we are hoping to build a really good relationship with our clients to, to build an ongoing uh, more of a consultant relationship than just delivering our service to them. So as of right now, as Thomas mentioned, he's in central Alberta on southern Sask. We're just going to work out of our garages for the first year, but eventually we would like to expand into offices as well. For the first year, we're just going to use our own trucks, pull trailers around to go to job sites, but eventually we would like to acquire vans as well as we'd like to expand into other locations such as Manitoba or British Columbia. Also, we would like to partner up with another bin company such as Meridian. This way the bins can come prefabricated with all our technology on them. So as you can see in the picture on the left, the blue line going up the middle, that's the actual probe. Our probes start from $300 to $1,200. And on the right hand side, the white cap on top of the bin, that is the master unit, those are $2,900. And our probes, the $300 probes will just track the moisture in the bin and you'll have to plug into it directly to get all the information. 
But the $1,200 probes, these will give you full access to everything we have, such as the capacity, heat, and moisture in the bin. As well as these probes, once the bins get bigger, this is most likely an 1,800 bushel or 2,000 bushel bin. So as the bins get bigger, such as a 6,000 bushel bin, you may require two probes, 10,000 bushels, you may require three, and so on. And the master units will be required on the top of each one of the bins. And we projected that we'll have an average of three and a half customers per month. So our sales, our gross profit the first year is $166,000 and our net sales is $135,000. The second year, our gross profit is $190,000, and our net sales is 130. dollars This is a slight decrease just due to the fact that we're gonna to expand to other locations. And the third year, our gross profit is $231,000, and our net sales is $159,000. We also got a grant from the government for the first year for $60,000. This is just a te egg technology grant that the Canadian government gives. Any, Any questions? questions? Oh. It would be an average of three hours just to be safe. Yes, our app will have an annual fee. The first year, we're going to incentivize customers to talk word of mouth spread our product so doing this we'll have a free year subscription the first year and then after that it's just a hundred dollars per year Well, thank you guys for that. Next up, we got Herd Tech, and that's put on by Amy Smith and Matthew Hoffman. Amy grew up on a small family farm near Maple Creek, Saskatchewan, raising mixed cattle, sheep, and poultry. She was a part of the local 4-H club for 11 years, taking part in multiple projects. Amy attended Lakeland College in, for the agribusiness diploma, and she's focusing on the marketing stream. Matthew has also been focusing on the math or on the Matthew stream, on the marketing stream. And he grew up in Regina, Saskatchewan and has spent eight years working in customer service with the last four working at G3. He is also completing the agribusiness diploma. Hi, I'm Amy Smith, and I am the Accounting and Finance Lead. I'm Matthew Hoffman, and I am the Marketing and Customer Relations Lead. We will also both be overseeing an IT team of two people. What we need to get started, there will be an investment opportunity. We are looking for a $25,000 startup loan. Uh, we're also looking for software developers, someone with a software engineering background to help create and perfect our product and help with any questions we have may have for the first couple years. We'll also be looking for connections within the ag and tech industry so we can grow our knowledge in both of them. We are also looking for some partner companies that will, are willing to partner with our business and share their information, information with us. In our first year we will be partnering with Flock. It is a handheld electronic identification reader as well as it can track your calving records, medication records, weights, preg checking, 
as well as you can add new animals through this device. If you are not able to scan your cow's radio frequency identification tag, you can search them up by their visual identification tag. This is a rugged device that does not require cellular or Wi-Fi connection to operate at full capacity. In our second year, we'll be partnering with Lone Star Tracking, which has various GPS technologies, and we are choosing the satellite GPS ear tag as it will be the most friendliest to ranchers that do not have access to cellular connection. So for marketing, we will have Instagram and Facebook where we'll we do targeted posts to and boost it to the top of people's feeds. Uh, we will also have a website and an app in year two where we will show off our product, the pricing, and what comes with the different subscription levels. It will also be where you can sign in and access your software. We will also be attending things like trade shows, agribition, and the Calgary Stampede, showing off our product on the desktop with the premium plan where farmers can come and try it out for themselves. We are marketing our product to cow-calf producers, backgrounding operations, as well as feedlots, with a focus on the cow-calf operations, as that is what Flock is focusing on, as it is also a new product being released at the end of 2023. With our product, there are about 40,000 beef cattle operations in Canada, with an average of 95 cows, not including bulls or calves. In year one, we do have a net loss of $32,000, due to the fact that we are a new company with lower revenue in the first year, as well as we have lots of startup costs. We have an ROI of 21% in the first year, and then included in our net income is our grant income, as we can apply for a grant through Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, which is the Agriculture Sciences and Technology Program, which matches the owner contributions up to $250,000 for the first five years of existence. In year two, our ROI drops down to 15%, as we withdraw funds at the end of the year to reinvest in year three to trigger the grant once again. Then in year three, we substantially increase our revenue as our monthly subscriptions transfer into yearly subscriptions. And and for customer projections, at year in, by the end of year one, we're hoping to reach 150 customers which is actually 0.4% of all beef operations, that 40,000. By the end of year two, we hope to triple our customer base, reaching 450 customers, which is 1.3% of the 40,000 beef operations. And by the end of year three, we're hoping to over double our customer base again, reaching almost 1,200 customers, which is a 1.9% of all beef operations. This will be a profitable business venture as we, cattle producers are looking for a software that will connect their farm technologies in a single source. The floor is now open for questions. Up in the corner. Our website will be in year one, the app won't begin until year two. And that's just because we don't have, we don't believe we need to promote on the app store as we'll be a newer company and the website will be good enough to start. Yes. Um, that is also on a subscription basis, depending on what frequency you want it to report back to you. So they have a 24-hour, 12-hour, 6-hour, and 1-hour intervals of giving you your information on their dashboard, as well as we would be asking them to send that information to our program as well. Up next, we have GNN Consulting, and this is presented by Gertrude Singh and Noel Vandenbosch. 
Gertrand is an international student with a keen interest in farming from Punjab, India. He grew up on a mixed farm, growing different crops like rice, grains, vegetables, and a herd of buffalo. Noel comes from poultry and grain, grain farm near Olds, Alberta. <clears throat> Coming from a family who immigrated from the Netherlands and England, he has seen the growth and possibility in Canada. His hope is to follow his father's footsteps on the farm. Somebody described what's happening to farming in this country as ethnic cleansing. That's a strong thing to say. But it sort of is happening. The government is trying to drive farmers out of their land. Alrighty, good afternoon everyone. Can I just get a quick show of hands of who here has either immigrated or been or is the first generation to be born in Canada? Well, that's a pretty good turnout, I have to say. Well, at GNN Consulting, we're here to make the moving dreams a reality and make a streamlined service out of it. We're here to help you get a move on. So, my name is Noel Vandenbosch. I'm the real estate specialist. This is my 50% partner. My name is Gurcharan Singh and I'm an immigration specialist. So, our stories. I'll let uh, Gary take it away. So, why I come to Canada? As Indian government just put a new policies in our country. So, it's hard to do a farming in India now. So, I just move on. So, I took an agribusiness program in a Lakeland College. So, I can learn about the Canadian farming. And so I can start my farm and my business. My story is a little different. My dad and uncle moved over in 1993 from Holland. Uh, they started dairying. 2005, my mother and father started the farm, Old Gate Farm. And now today, we have, they run 1,100 acres. Uh, they have 95,000 broiler chickens, as well as a sizable custom farming operation. So here is our services. So we're going to provide a farm tours, digital inquiries, realty consultation, and immigration services. We want to help our customers from start to finish, from the moment they land here and start touring farms to the moment they buy a farm and helping them move. Our target clients are Dutch farmers, Indian farmers, and farmers from United Kingdoms. Why Indian farmers? As I told you guys, in India, government put the new policies, which is hard for our farming. So they just want to move on, so where they can dwell. And for Holland, it's the same thing. Uh, they've put in policies now to push farmers out and create more nature land. They have a $20 billion budget for this. So I think it's a great opportunity. So here is our goals. So we're going to provide a good immigration services to our customers. So because it's a difficult, serve, difficult part. As I have on experience, it's too hard to get a immigration services too fast and good. So we're gonna make it for our customers. And our other goal is to, to connect farmers, to, to connect with farmers and their communities and help them uh, relocate to Canada. So our project need, 
Uh, Gertrude and myself, we will be putting $20,000 in as a startup cost. We're also in need of $20,000 from an investor. And we need our marketing knowledge as we are doing our business in another country like Dutch, India and Britain. So we need our marketing knowledge so we can do good marketing and have our customers with our company. So here is an example of our service, how we're going to charge our customers like application fees, $500. We're going to find a farm for the farmer and immigration fees is $5,500 for an average family of five. So to expand on this a little bit, I have an example here just west of town in Innisfree. Uh, there is eight parcels coming up for sale on CLH bid. Uh, as you can see in the, uh, the little table I've created, um, the total price, market price, should be 3.25 million. So if we were to bring our customer to that on top of their immigration fees, we would bring our customer to the realtor and refer them to the realtor this would allow us to catch a 25% uh, commission off of the 3% that the realtor gets. And uh, for the future, we hope to be able to be the realtor and buy, sell the farm so we get the full 3% of the purchase price. Um, a timeline for this is about six months as immigration and uh, getting everything ready to go takes a while. And the total cost of our service is around just under 30,000 for a place like this. So here is our finance. First year, we're gonna spend like $95,000 and our revenue gonna be like near about $140, $100. And in second year, it's gonna be like near about our expense is $2,000 and our revenue is $250,000. $250, and third year, our expense is $250,000 and our revenue gonna be like $600. So why is Noel, can you explain? Yeah for, yeah, for sure, Gary. So our first year, 2024, we're gonna keep it moderate. We wanna move two, uh, two farming families over. Uh, reason being we're new, we're starting up. This is, uh, it's gonna be a lengthy process. It's the first time doing it for us. But after that, we think we got her. 2025. Our goal is to move four farms over. Um, and as you can see, just taking the referral fees. In 2026, our goal is to start catching commission instead of taking referral fees. That's why ours, our uh, revenue is so high, as stated in the red line. And um, yeah, our goal is five farms for that. So how are we going to do the marketing? First is our digital marketing. We're going to do the our biggest platform, Facebook and Instagram. We're gonna target advertising 35 to 55 old farming demographic. So also we will be uh, uh, advertising through influ influential farming media. So likes of Grassman or like farming related magazines in Europe or in Holland, Britain and um, India. So Grassman is one in Ireland. They are uh, quite widespread. I don't know anybody else who likes to look at tractors other than farmers. And then uh, there's another one, the Trekker magazine in Holland, and that's on almost every coffee table you go to on a farm. And another one is trade show marketing. First, we're gonna go for the two fairs. First is in Germany, Hanover, Agritechnica, and another one is in India, Punjab, Punjab Agriculture University. So these two fairs have a combined traffic of 800,000 people and we're gonna get our biggest customers in these fairs. So for more information, as Gary said, visit our Facebook and Instagram pages. Our contacts are up on the screen as well. And uh, now we'd like to invite any questions. From what I've seen, Manitoba. 
That's what I'm thinking. It seems like there's a lot of farms there and lots of land available. Thank you very much. Next up, we got Tipsy's Event Services, put on by Becky Radcliffe and Clinton Rempel. Don't worry, the screen's supposed to be black. <laughs> Becky grew up on a farm outside of Indian Head, Saskatchewan, where she spent time working and playing, um, playing sports on her local high school team. She also spent time going to rodeos, roping jackpots, and auction sales with her parents. This helped spark the idea of the business plan. Well, Clinton was raised in northern BC near Fort St. John. He grew up working on the family ranch alongside with working for neighboring ranches in the area until he worked as or in the oil fields and gas field before coming to Lakeland College. The cowboy and oil patch life is no stranger to the party lifestyle that sparked this business plan. How's everyone doing tonight? All right, who here has been to an event where they wish they could get a little drunk or have a drink or two? So we let me introduce you to Tipsy's mobile event service. So Tipsy's is a mobile bar service that caters to the province of Alberta and is based out of Edmonton. We are a seasonal operation and we run every weekend from September, from May to October. Um, we have a customizable menu of hard liquor, booze, coolers, and our specialty drink, the Tipsy Slushy. And we also have non-alcoholic beverages for people who don't drink. And for those of you who like drunk snacks, we do offer hot dogs and popcorn for when you're a little snacky. We also rent out trailers throughout the whole year. They include covered trailers, flat decks, and stock trailers. So I'm Becky Radcliffe, and I'm in charge of the marketing and the event planning side of Tipsies. So from finding new customers to making sure the trailers are stocked for the next event, that's my job. I'm Clinton Rempel. I'm in charge of purchasing trailers, trailer renovations, and trailer rentals, and any maintenance to any of the trailers. So the first hurdle we're going to need to overcome is finding customers, because if we don't have clients there, our service isn't really necessary. But we built a marketing plan to make sure this wouldn't be a problem. Our first step is using social media to get our name out there. We want to use Facebook and Instagram to announce any availabilities, special announcements, and also use it for our online booking. There's this app called Jane that is through Facebook, and all you need is a Facebook account, and you can hit book now and choose the date you want, and you're all set up, and you don't have to make a different account. We also want to use TikTok for the behind the scenes of our operation and show people the setting up of our trailer day in the life just so they know what we're really about and they can really trust us. Our next marketing plan is to utilize pop-up bars in different cities like Calgary, Red Deer, Medicine Hat. And the reason there's a quotation around bars is because we won't be serving liquor at these events. Instead, we're going to use it more as a networking opportunity so we can meet clients face to face and they'll remember us more than just seeing a social media post. And then we're also at least two times a year going to go to trade shows where we can bring our trailers and do the same idea as the pop-up bars, but we're just going to have a higher traffic area of people, so we'll be able to reach more customers. So our target customers are going to be people who put on rodeos, fall fairs, cattle shows, events like that, because they are reoccurring customers and their events a lot of times happen year after year. And people who 
put on rodeos, also go to rodeos, and so they can meet us there as well. We will also do your wedding. However, weddings are usually only a one-time thing, we hope. But we will go to as many weddings as you have, along with any other social events. So now that you know who we are and what we do, what do we need to get this started? And to be completely honest, we need money. So we require a $35 to $1,000 startup loan so we can purchase our first trailer and cover any startup costs so we can have our first event. So our startup cost to purchase a trailer at a Flame and Trailers in Edmonton is $26,000. And then our renovation fee, including everything to set up the trailer as a bar trailer, is roughly $6,500. So in our first year, our revenue is projected as $75,000 with $25,000 of expenses and a $50,000 profit, leaving an ROI of 30%. We base this revenue on four events a month for those six months, and we account one day as one event so if you have a three-day rodeo that'll be three events and that's how we get our numbers for that and then in year two we're going to increase our events per month to six events per month so and we're also launching the rental service side of our business so that'll bring us in a revenue of one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars and we'll have expenses worth sixty five thousand and that's because we're buying two trailers to use for our rental services with cash and that'll bring us sixty five or sixty thousand dollars in profit and a ninety two percent roi so then in year three we're going to have a two hundred five thousand um, dollar revenue with a seventy five thousand dollar expenses uh, this is from us purchasing another bar trailer and fully furnish it, ready for it to hit the road. And our profit will be $130,000, leaving us an ROI of 173%. So there are 20 other mobile bar services in Alberta, and what makes us stand out, and why would you choose us? First off, we're rural people, serving rural people, and we know that you don't like the fancy flair that city people give the small town vibes. So that's why we offer a customizable drink menu because we know that small town people, people at rodeos, aren't going to be ordering mimosas or anything fancy like that. We also have bigger trailers than the typical mobile bar service. We use 20 foot trailers opposed to the typical 10 foot trailers. And this gives us, gives us the opportunity to have more storage and we can serve more people and go longer during our nights. And lastly, we've mitigated any financial risk that we have by adding the trailer rental services since we are a seasonal operation. There's going to be some months in the year where we don't have any income coming in, but with these trailer services, we have a passive income coming in all year and we don't have to worry about going bankrupt or anything. And with these reasons, we believe that we will be the number one mobile bar service in Alberta with the right startup investment. Any questions from the crowd? Yes, in the back. So how are you guys dealing with like like the licenses? Like do you guys get the licenses or is that just something that you Um we will contact the person putting on the event and they will have to organize the liquor license for their event. Any other questions? Yes, in the back. We bring the trailer to your place with the liquor you want and the amount that you want and including bartenders. Thank you, everyone. Well, I'm sure that one caught all the students' attention. Up next, we have Agriculture Drone Services, presented by Matt Hayter and Colin Voss. Matt grew up in a small town in southern Ontario, working for a local farmer, getting his high school diploma, before deciding to pursue post-secondary ag in Vermilion, focusing on the crop side of ag business. Colin grew up on a hay farm in southern Alberta, working for his father in the summer. He went to high school in Lethbridge and took a year off to work before pursuing an ag business diploma at Lakeland, focusing on the marketing stream.
Hey everyone, my name is Matt Hader and this is Colin Voss. And we thank you for taking the time to watch our presentation on our business plan, Egg Drone Services. So business overview, uh, we plan on offering uh, egg ser our drone services in the agricultural industry to other people in, the, in that industry. So uh, we will offer photography for uh, uh, acreages who want who want photos taken, or for uh, realtors who want photographs of their properties taken, we will offer off. We will also offer scouting and monitoring services for uh, crop farmers, as well as cow counting services for feedlots and dairy farmers, and mapping services for construction projects or whenever someone needs that. Moving on to the key objectives, we have came up with four key objectives. Starting off with number one to build a business that farmers will be able to trust and help better their operations. Number two, to further the acceptance of drones in the Canadian agricultural industry. And number three, to make sure the data gathered is accurate and specific to the customer needs. And number four, to build a business ready to expand into other services as regulations change, such as drone spraying. So for our human resource plan, uh, we don't plan on hiring any additional staff until year three when we plan on hiring a seasonal customer service representative to help us in the busy months. Uh, I will be the head of business operations, so I'll be in charge of day-to-day uh, -day operations, uh, accounting, customer service, that kind of thing, as well as uh, I'll be a pilot if needed at, at the beginning before we hire any other ones. Uh, Matthew will operate as our drone foreman, so he will train new pilots when they come, as well as uh, do the logistics of the day-to-day -day, uh, drone flying services. Uh, we plan on also hiring additional drone pilots in year four to help us with increased customer demand. Moving on to the operations plan, our normal business hours will run from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday to Friday, although we are available outside of these hours upon customer request. We plan on scouting between May and September and photography and other services year round. The DJI Phantom 4 Pro will be used for photography and other services. And the DJI Matrice 300 will be used for photography or for, map, for scouting and mapping. We'll also be using our operating out of our trucks to save on startup costs. We also right now own uh, DJI Maverick 2, which will be used for photographing too, photography. So uh, the prices, so our prices and services offered, uh, we're going to offer aerial photography services for $150 an hour, and that will include 15 photos. Additional photos and additional time will be at a surcharge. Uh, crop monitoring and scouting will depend on the package purchased. There are three packages offered. Uh, the single flyover for $3 an acre, uh, a half season which is five flyovers and that's at uh, $9 an acre for that half season, and a full season which is 10 flyovers and that's charged twelve fifty an acre for the full season. Uh, other services like uh, cow counting and uh, mapping services will be charged at a flat rate of $200 per hour. Moving on to promotions, we'll have an Instagram set up here on the left, which is run by Colin. We also have a website which has our, all of our services and our packages offered and our contact information at the bottom. Also here on the right, we have our billboard, which is up by the road by Voss Farms. Uh, every year we will be purchasing a booth at the Lethbridge Egg Expo to try to promote our service there. Uh, within the industry. We will be advertising every year between May and July on Wild 95.5 in Lethbridge, which is Lethbridge's uh, main country radio, so a lot of farmers listen to it. Uh, we're, we want to sell those from May to July because that's when we'll mostly be selling our scouting packages. Uh, we also will buy a booth at the Southern Alberta Home and Garden Show to uh, promote our photography business to realtors and acreage owners. Uh, we also offer a refer a friend program for so you can get a discount if you refer someone to us. So for reward of mouth marketing. Uh, for our financials, as you can see, we have a pretty high ROI right off the bat at 220% in the first year. 
This will fall to 208% in the second year because we plan on buying an additional drone and that will be financed entirely with capital without additional financing. So our cash outflows go up for that year, but it goes back, uh, but our ROIs go back up in year three when our cash outflows go back to normal and our cash inflows continue rising and our ROI that year is 294%. Moving on to the project need, starting off with financing, Kel and I will both be contributing $5,000 and, but we we'll also need an additional $40,000 for startup costs for the drones and other equipment. We we'll also need help with data analysts, since me and Colin aren't data scientists. And networking. We'll need help with networking and referrals before we can kick off our promotions. Uh, any questions? Yes, Cole. Uh, our... Aerial photography is right in line with industry average. Our scouting is a little bit impossible to tell because there's not really a lot of that going on in, at least in Alberta, but compared to other producers in uh, the United States, it's a little, it's, it's right in line with there, but a little bit less expensive. Uh, we charge around a uh, dollar 40 an acre per flyover with our most uh with our most with our full season package in the US it's gen the cheapest you can usually get is 250 an acre so any other questions yeah uh it'll mostly be local southern alberta uh south of calgary uh probably in up to medicine hat area that kind of all around, prop, but probably within a two-hour drive of Lethbridge or so. Well, thank you, Matt and Colin. I can't lie, I was hoping you were going to fly it, but I won't hold it against you. Up next, we got Advantage Livestock Marketing with Grace Dolman and Carter Chomick. Grace grew up on a commercial cattle operation located outside of Craig, Saskatchewan. And over the last few years, she's been working with horses in Manitoba and saw a need for a new livestock marketing company that works with both cattle and horses. Carter grew up on a small car cattle operation in Bruce, Alberta. Carter's dad has worked for the Charlet Banner for a few years, which gave Carter a lot of insight into the livestock marketing industry. Carter and Grace are excited to share some information on Advantage Livestock Marketing with you today. Hey Grace, have you seen the Thunderbird horse sale promo? Carter, I was just thinking the same thing. I've seen it everywhere. The pictures are clear, the information is really easy to read, and the catalog is well put together. I'm Grace Dahlman. I'm Carter Comic. And we are Advantage Livestock Marketing. Advantage Livestock Marketing is a Canadian livestock producer's one-stop shop for all their livestock marketing and sale needs. We offer a buffet of services that will fit every customer's livestock and horse, cattle and horse sale needs. I'll be in charge of the social media, the design, the photography, and the editing. I'll be in charge of public relations, print and distribution, and sales management. Advantage Livestock Marketing is a 50-50 partnership between both Carter and I. Our mission at Advantage Livestock Marketing is to reinvent livestock sales and marketing and to provide a variety of specialized services in a professional, concise, and creative manner to level up your business and the agriculture industry. We do this by working directly with you, our customer, to ensure every detail of your operation is being handled exactly how you would want it. We're here today looking for your business. Here's what we have to offer you. The services we provide is catalog design and distribution. We also do photography and videography. In the future, we'd like to get into sales management as well. And this is where our term buffet comes into effect. 
because you know, our customers can pick and choose from all four of these services to one or the other. And in the future here, when we do get into the sales management, this will give us a push above all of our competitors since we'll be the only one in the industry that offers all four of those services and the option to choose between them all. So for pricing, horses ranges depending on the customer's need, starting at $100 per animal with group, op group pricing options available. For cattle, pictures are $25 per head and $35 for videos, and for both it's $55 per head. Catalog design is $35 per page, and for catalog production, we outsource this through a company called Newprint. 100 catalogs is $10 a book or $2,500 for $3 a book, and this kind of varies depending on how many catalogs you're looking to order. We will also be charging a mileage fee, but we'll discuss this with our customers beforehand and before we get there. So for finance, for revenue in our first year, uh, we're at 135,000, our expenses are 116,000, our net income is 19,000, and our ROI is 30%. In year two, our revenue is 168,000, our expenses are 150,000, our net income is 21,000, and our ROI is 37%. In year three, our revenue is 208,000, our expenses 180,000, and our net income is 29,000, and our ROI is 56%. In the first year, we'll be taking out a $10,000 operating loan to help cover some startup costs. We plan to do this as a side gig for the first five years of operation and only take on hopefully seven clients for each service and then progress that by three each year until we can move into a full-time job with it. So for marketing, we'll focus on our two main social media platforms being Instagram and Facebook. And then we'll also have our website where people can find more information about our services, pricing, and contact us. And then in the future, we'll also look at implementing a page where customers can advertise their sales. We'll also be focusing on going to trade shows such as Agribition, Equine Expo, and Farm Fair. So we get that face-to-face -face contact with, our, with the producers and gain business there. Our area that we'll be covering is... Alberta and Saskatchewan from Vermilion down to the border, but as we progress and get a bigger customer base, we'd also expand north and cover all of Alberta and Saskatchewan as well. A good portion of our advertising budget will be allocated to billboards like the one you can see here, and we'll have those up within our territory, and then we'll also use radio advertisements to connect with our older demographic. And you can see our social media and Facebook links here, and now we'll have a video from a previous customer. Now we're going to look at some of the things we can do. So for photography, in the top left corner, we have a colt owned by Rock and BS Ranch. And then both the bulls you see pictured here are Lakeland College bulls from the 2022 Roundup sale. And then the bottom right corner is a mare owned by Thunderbird Horse Center. Moving on to design, these are two catalog pages we drafted up for the purposes of this presentation, just so you guys can get a feel of what we have to offer. Now into some facts. The Canadian horse industry generates $13.5 billion for the Canadian economy annually. Quarter horses are the most common breed of horse in Canada, and there are almost 250,000 quarter horses in Canada as of 2019. And the Canadian horse industry supports more than 154,000 full-time jobs. There are 10,000 registered breeders of beef cattle of all breeds in Canada. There's 1.56 million beef cows in Alberta and 1.04 million beef cows in Saskatchewan. And Canada's beef sector generates 21.8 billion to Canada's GDP. These facts highlight the need for Canadian livestock producers to be able to effectively market their livestock to ensure the growth and sustainability of the Canadian livestock sector. For our future plans, like we said before, we want to get into sales management. When we start in the sales management, it'll just be Grace and myself. So we're just going to start by taking the stress off the producers. We'll contact the marketing companies such as Borison, get the auctioneer lined up and do all that. But as we progress, we want to take on three more employees and that we can have our full on marketing team going. We no longer have to outsource that. And then with the online advertisements, you go on our website, there'll be a list of all of our customer sales and like a calendar style thing. And then they can also pay to have their uh, uh, catalog and pictures and videos up there as well. We'll also add styling advertisement design like the one you can see here. 
And then we'll also look at getting into show photography to help market our business and keep us busy. And then we'll also look at adding an additional office space in Lloyd Minister to support the seven new employees we plan on hiring. So like Carter mentioned before, we'll have three in sales and communications to help support us with our sales management. And then we'll also get it, but we'll start with three in design and marketing to help expand that portion of the business as that's our main source of income. We'll also be taking on one employee in finance too. So we don't we can do that in house and don't have to hire out someone to do that anymore. We'll just have our own employee that'll cover all that for us. Take the first step of leveling up your business today with Advantage Livestock Marketing. Are there any questions? Cool. Um, the chances are that most of it will come from cattle. Um, the horse industry is smaller in the sales side and they kind of just do it more off farm rather than having large production sales. However, bigger um, operations are getting more into having sales that are put on by other people. Any other questions? Janet? So because we have seven new employees and then both Carter and I, we would feel that having an office space would allow us to work more as a team and kind of set up as a home base so that we can have all of our operations there as well. And because we'd have so many things coming in for catalogs and distribution, it would just make it a lot more efficient. I'll add on, oh, <laughs> I'll add on that too. It's not like you'll be there every day working either. It's just kind of like she said, the home base. So if you have to come in, do this, or that's where catalogs will be shipped to to distribute there. Our finance person will be working through there. Or in the slower season, if there's anything that needs to be done, go to the office then. Thank you, Grace and Carter. Next up, we have Prairie on the Go Catering, and this is by Sydney Vance and Logan Schwartz. Sydney grew up on a grain farm outside of small town Imperial, Saskatchewan. She's in her third year at Lakeland College, currently as a double dip student in ag business. After college, Sydney plans on working by Calgary for Reinhardt Cutting Horses with a plan to move to Texas this upcoming winter. Logan was raised on a third generation family farm near Kelvington, Saskatchewan. He had the opportunity to learn from his grandpa, dad, and uncle, and was taught the valuable lessons that farming entails. Logan's love for farming led him to earn a crop technology diploma and then continued with an ag biz diploma. Uh, Prairie on the Go Catering. Hi, my name is Logan Schultz, and I'm the manager and logistics lead. I'm Sydney Vance, and I'm the website designer and accountant. So what is Prairie Marketing on the Go? We are a catering business for farm families during that stressful time of year of seeding and harvest. We will promote local products in our weekly menus. Our location is going to be in Wadena, Saskatchewan, where we'll have a hired cook on hand to prepare our meals. When seeding and harvest isn't going on, we will have meal boxes for our customers, and our goal is to serve quality and delicious meals for farmers during those stressful times of year. As farmers ourselves, we understand how busy harvest and seeding can be and how difficult it can be feeding all the people, helping getting the crop in and off the field. That is why we created a catering business to meet the needs of farm families. Um, in our families, both of us, everyone is expected to work in the field, which causes limited to no time for preparing meals. This causes a lot of stress on the families for preparing meals. 
some more details about the company. And in our first few years, we're looking at renting a kitchen out in Medina just because of the high cost of having our own. We're also looking at getting a vehicle like the one shown here to deliver meals out to the field. And we're also going to use one of our own personal vehicles. And lastly, both our supper in the field meals and our uh, frozen meals will be found on our website where you'll be able to input your location to where you want it to be delivered or for pickup at our kitchen. Our weekly menu will be uploaded on our website and Facebook page. You will find local products found featured within each of our meals and multiple options for customers to choose from. Our weekly menu is for our fresh meals and our frozen meals vary while supplies last. Uh, so on the right here, here's a menu option. You can choose from the four uh, mains and then uh, two dessert options. For promoting our business, we will have a website and Facebook page where customers can order their meals online and pay for them. And they can also decide whether they need pickup or delivery, and they can add in their specific delivery location. We will also have our website open for customers to give us any feedback. We will be visiting a few trade shows like Egg in Motion, Canadian Crop Production Show, and Agribition. We want to promote our business to as many farmers as we can, and we will be offering food samples from our menus. We will also be having decals made for our delivery van that will have our business logo, website, and phone number. So on the left here, we have our pricing for our supper in the field meals. It ranges anywhere from six to 20 meal uh, packages. Uh, included in that will be your meal itself, uh, a drink and a dessert. And then on the right, we have our frozen meal box options. It ranges from a single meal to six meals within a box, and that will include the meal and then a recipe card to produce it. So for our financials, in year one, we have a projected revenue of 106,000, expenses of 87,000, and a net income of 19,000. In year two, we project 147,000, expenses of 103,000 for a net income of 44,000. And lastly, in year three, we have a projected revenue of 188,000 for expenses of 140,000 and a net income of 48,000. Uh, between years two and three, our net income didn't increase too much just because in year three, we had to bring on some more staff just because of our inflow of customers. And also in year three, our rent went up on our kitchen that we got just because of the amount of hours that we're gonna be using it that year. Our goal of our business is to take the stress away from our farmers by preparing meals for them and delivering them to the field. We want our customers to believe and trust in the quality of our meals and build a healthy relationship with our farmers. Uh, thank you and the question, any questions? Janet, yeah. Can you explain to me why you are looking at doing trade shows at like Egg in Motion exhibition and um, the other one, Crop Show, when you're located in a specific area and wanting to do it in the Well, we want to go to, we are a farming business and we want to go to, I guess, farm trade shows. We are located in Wadena, Saskatchewan, so we wouldn't be far from Regina, where um, agribition happens. And we're kind of just want to, there's lots of farm shows that happen in Saskatchewan that we want to um, involve ourselves with. I think it just gets your business out there, too. You get to see a lot of people there. Yes, cool. Uh, we'd like to partner with a couple bigger companies too, other than just the local. Those ones will just be featured just so that they can get into our menu and get their business out there too.
We're going to take a little 10 minute break. So if everyone can be back just before, just around four ish.
Well, I guess we'll get back into it. I think we lost a couple people, but. <laughs> so uh, first up, we got Prairie Works, and that's put on by Ashley Blue and Peter Funsale. Ashley is from a small farm and ranch operation near Esther, Alberta. She came to Lakeland College after high school and majored in marketing and communications. Peter is from West Central Saskatchewan, where he finished his high school years after moving to Canada from South Africa in his grade 10 year. He is a marketing major with a livestock minor. Hi, my name is Peter Fansail. And I'm Ashley Blue. And we are Prairie Works, Skid Steer, and Snow Removal Services. <laughs> A little bit about our team. I will be running operations and sales, so I'll be the main operator for the business, running equipment, going out to job sites, and quoting jobs for the customers. And I'll be ma managing both finance and marketing within the business. Uh, the way our business is set up, we have a 60-40 partnership between me and Ashley, as I'll be the full-time employee for the company, and Ashley will be part-time. Um, a little bit about Prairie Works. We're a skid steer and snow removal company based out of Humboldt, Saskatchewan, both offering both residential and commercial services. We'll also be operating a two-hour radius outside of Humboldt, which brings us to the outskirts of Saskatoon, Prince Albert, Tisdale, and also going south to Watrous and uh, east, uh, your, the outsides of Yorkton, Saskatchewan. Our mission at Prairie Works is to provide quality service with grit, integrity, and efficiency. So a little bit about our services and how our pricing works. For our services, the base price is $150 an hour for most services. This includes snow removal, groundwork, your bin preparation, your RTM base prep, and your gravel spreading and leveling. And we will also be offering brush clearing. This is if you want trails in your acreage or if you have some wooded areas, you want some brushes cleared to farm it. This will be charged at $170 an hour. This is just a little more because it's higher wear and tear on equipment. And also we will be personally scouting out the area and mapping it out to make sure there's no debris in the way and damage to equipment. Um, with our pricing also, you see what you see is what you pay. There's no hidden fees with us. The $150 an hour includes our fuel costs, us coming out to your site to quote the job and also offering our services. We are looking to get our foot in the door and gain contracts with the city of Humboldt as part of their expansion plan on growing their population from 6,000 to 15,000. We would also like to work alongside different landscaping companies and a multitude of farmers. We are also considering potentially subcontracting with larger construction companies that are in the Humboldt area as well. Our project need is that we need your help in increasing our customer base and getting Prairie Works name out there. So you might ask who are our customers? Is it those who need small scale, small scale construction then? For residential customers, if you want the do want to be the talk of the town with the nicest yard, we can offer some landscaping services. If you want some gravel put into your driveway to help with those muddy seasons to minim minimize that. For our rural and commercial customers, for our farmers out there for the upcoming year, if you want to expand your bin yard and we can do some bin pad preparation for you to put in those bins for the upcoming growing season. For our commercial customers, if you want to expand your business lot, we can help do the dirt work for that and we can also in the winter offer our snow removal services to be a company utilized all year. For our marketing plan, we're mostly going to be relying on word of mouth marketing from our customers and different customer testimonials. We would also like to have newspaper advertisements in the local newspaper around Humboldt, as well as sponsor both small businesses and events that are in our area. With that, we'll have both Instagram and Facebook accounts to showcase all the great work that Peter here does. 
On the left is one of our Instagram posts of Peter out on a job just outside of Humboldt. We are planning to post weekly pictures and videos of Peter out on job sites. And on the right here is a billboard that we would like to put up in our local hockey arena for advertisement. Our newspaper advertisements would look sim similar to this as well. For our financials within Prairie Works, for year one, we're, have, we're projecting our sales to be 177,000. Our expenses are projected at 97,500, and our net income from the year would be 79,500. Our return on investment for year one will be 28%. So for this year one, we're just kind of getting out there, getting our name out there, establishing our customer base, and building relationships with customers. The sales projection is based off our busy months running from May to October, running about 40 hours a week off of that base pay of $150 an hour. With our winter months, we're slowing it down to at least probably 15 hours a week, clearing business lots with just snow removal. For year two, we're projecting our sales to be 190,000. Our expenses are projected at 101,500 and our net income from the year will be 88,500. Our return on investment will be 2% for year two. This 2% ROI is due to an investment as we want to expand our services and be more utilized as a company. And with that, we are establishing our customer base and growing sales as we get new customers. For year three, we're projecting our sales to be 202,000. Our expenses are projected at 106,500, and our net income from the year will be 95,500. Our return on investment is going to be a negative four for the year three. This negative four comes due to a large investment in the company for equipment. We wanted to also provide a year four financial projection. So for year four, our sales are projected at 230,000. Our expenses are projected at 110,000 and our net income from the year will be approximately 120,000. Our return on investment is gonna jump back up again and be at 44%. So you might wonder what causes this drop in ROI and what is giving us this boost back up again in year four, as we'll explain. So for year two, we are expanding to buy a gooseneck dump trailer as we can utilize this for some of our dirt work and our gravel work. And then we can also utilize it as a full snow removal service in the winter. In year three, we'll be buying a mini excavator. This will give us access more to those commercial customers and the residential customers who want to build their foundation and get that trenches dug. And we will also be hiring our first full-time employee in for year three. So it will be me and another operator. We would like to thank everyone for taking time to listen to our presentation today. Are there any questions from the crowd? Yes. Um, the question is, will we be hiring out another person in the busy seasons? As of right now, and based off what the work we were kind of calculating, for the first couple of years, we don't need an extra hand. And in those busy seasons, if we have two operators, I might, I think I have to hire out a little bit just to be able to quote more jobs and give more accurate quotation, quotes on job sites. Yeah. Are there any other questions, Darla? <laughs> the question was if I aspire to ever run the skid steer, and no, I do not plan to be in, opera in operations in this business. I will mostly just be focusing on finance and marketing. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we got someone other than Cole and Janet that asked a question, so. <laughs> Up next, we have the Calming Patch by Bullseye, or by, yeah, by Lane Chandler and Josh Davidson. Lane is from Bruce County, Ontario, where she and her family run a large cow-calf commercial herd, primarily Charlotte. She also shows cattle all over the province, but would like to expand that wider. With growing up in the industry, she always noticed one problem, and that's fighting bulls. 
So when she thought of the calming patch, that's, sorry. So when she thought about a calming patch, that's what this business plan is about. Josh's home is a large family farm located 10 minutes south of Kitscotty, Alberta. Alongside his parents and siblings, they have been raising bulls their whole life. A product like this would have saved them all a couple bruises. Who here has had a bull or bought one and had it get injured within a year? <laughs> I know my family has. Hi, I'm Lane Chandler, and I'll be the marketing and customer relations for Bullseye. Uh, I'm Josh Davidson. I am the manufacturing and shipping lead. Uh, well, I live on a big mixed farm operation with over 300 uh, bulls. A uh, product like this would really help around the farm. Our product is a patch that goes on its bull's hip or shoulder wherever the producer may like it. It's infused with a scent that makes all bulls smell the same, so there's no problems of fighting and stuff like that. We also can have it customizable with the producer's lot numbers or if the producer just has a farm logo can go either way uh, why buy our product uh, a concern is although it's not a proven product there are many benefits it is a small compact easy to use easy to apply uh, scent patch um, with full with over 300 bulls on the farm we lose around 6 to 12 bulls per year from fighting um, for a $5 patch to, as a cheap insurance, it's an easy, cheap way to keep your bulls from fighting. Um, it's also customizable, like you said. You can put your lot number, your farm name, your farm brand, everything you want. Our project need, we just mainly need clientele. We have the product and we have everything else. We just need the producers to make it in the world, in the industry? Uh, for a customer ID, our largest market are bull sales and bull producers, as well as cow-calf operations. And then further down the line, when we become a more established product, we will, we will target that bison producer market. <laughs> our promotion and our marketing, we're mainly going to be on Facebook because that's where producers slash farmers are mainly on. Most of them spend their days scrolling Facebook Marketplace. So we will be, that'll be our top advertising. And then we'll also go to our clients if with their permission to go to their bull sales and set up a booth there. And then we will also go to trade shows like Agribition, like the Royal Winter Fair, Farm Fair, all of those ones just to get the clientele and then in the future we will have a website but mainly for now we will just get the orders through Facebook. Uh, where are we located? We're located out of Bruce County, Ontario and Kitscotty, Alberta. Our main uh, region of focus is that Saskatchewan, Alberta uh, region uh, mainly because there are more bull sales, uh, more cow calf operations overall, just a larger clientele. We'll also have a small clientele in Bruce County as well in Ontario in general because there is bull sales out there, but they're not to the size of Alberta has, but the quality is still there. So we will advertise out there and sell two products out there too. Uh, our finances. So our revenue in the first year is 2600 bucks. Our expenses is $4,200 for a net income loss of $1,600. Uh, this is mainly due because of our travel costs, going from bull sale to bull sale, trade show to trade show. Um, our return on investment is still 28%. Uh, year two, we're starting to tighten that gap as only losing $300. Our revenue is 3700 
our expenses stay around that $42, $4,100 mark, and now our return on investment is 34%. Uh, year three, we turned a profit of $400. Our revenue is now $4,500 bucks due to more clients, and our expenses stay the same, and now our return on investment is 42%. Any questions? Off top. Are you planning on like how does this impact like wondering is this like a tag or how does it like um Okay, the question is how is the patch applied? It is placed right on the hip, right where usually your lot tag would be. And it, what it does is it essentially just makes all the bulls smell the same. So all that excess testosterone and hormones in the air. Are kind of just eliminated. Yeah.
For our financial breakdown, in our first year of Ranchard Supply, we have a total sales of 989000 Our expenses are 805000 Our return on investment is at 82%. We had this return on investment due to the fact in our first year, we received our women in egg loan as well as we had our personal contributions to the company. In our second year, our sales increased to just over $1 million, with expenses decreasing down to 761000 We had this decrease in expenses due to the fact we didn't have to do an initial inventory purchase like we did our first year. We did, however, decide to purchase an enclosed trailer for each of our locations due to the fact we were going to be attending local events. We had a return on investment of 82%. In our third year, our sales increased once again to just over $1.1 million. Our expenses were up at $840,000. We had this expense due to the fact in our third year, we started to pay back our loans as well as we hired an employee for each location, having a return on investment of 92%. So why you should choose Rancher Supply Outlet? First off is our location. We have set our feed stores in specific locations to be able to reach new customers so they don't have to travel far for feed. And second is our variety of products. We have higher quality feeds that have more nutrition, fewer allergies, easier digestion, and overall healthier animals. And lastly is our price variation. Um, our variety of products, we also have price ranges for different customers who want to spend. There's a price for everyone in our store. Our plan is to market our company through Instagram and Facebook, as well as attending local events. With this, we plan to keep our customers up to date with our products that we have in the store, as well as any sales that may be happening and any changes that may be happening as well. Here you can see an example of one of our Instagram posts. This is just showing some of the products that we can get into our store to provide for our customers. Here's an example of one of our Facebook posts. This was our welcome post. We're introducing ourselves as well as showing our potential customers where we plan to be located and what we plan to provide them with. Here are a few of the events that we plan on attending to help promote our business. We will be sponsoring these events to help build our clientele. The services that we provide are pet and livestock necessities. We have everything from pets to your livestock that covers feeds, supplements, and supplies, as well as we offer bulk pricing. We do offer pallets of feed for a certain price or certain quantities for a certain price as well. And lastly is delivery. We do deliver at both locations within 30 to 45 minutes of our area, and we will deliver feed and supplies to your door. We would like to thank you for attending our presentation today, and we're now opening the floor for any questions. So for so in our expenses um, for both locations, we took out mileage and we added it onto our expense, so it will be covered. Thailand, um, is there money in competition in any area to compete? So for my location, which would be the Kawartha Lakes location, um, the nearest place for us to go would be down to Lindsay, which is half an hour away. Um, as for Nevaeh's location, I'll let her touch on that. So for my location, for feed, like anyone in the Chetwin area, we have to go either to Fort St. John or Dawson Creek to get feed. And that's normally from like co-op or something. And they offer like totally different um, products like Hoffman's and stuff. So there's, it's a variation between the two. Thank you. Up next, we have Silver Spur Smoke Truck by Avery Beta and Merrick Stafford. Avery grew up on a mixed farm north of Edson, Saskatchewan, with bread cattle, feeder cattle, and a small grain operation. By being introduced to the agriculture industry at a young age, she developed a passion for agriculture, and she always knew that one day she wanted to pursue a career with this amazing industry. Merrick grew up farming and ranching north of Pincher Creek, Alberta. 
Their operation consists of purebred Black Angus cattle and a grain farm. He grew up in a family dedicated to raising the ultimate beef product that can be enjoyed on your plate day after day. Merrick participated in several activities that are involved with agriculture, such as 4-H and roping. He's also a journeyman welder by trade and looks forward to returning to the farm operation this spring. Hey, what you got there? Well, let's get into it. My name is Avery Beta. And I'm Eric Stauffer. And we are the owners and operators of Silver Spur Smoke Truck. We specialize in handcrafting, smoking, big delicious, big honking, badass beef ribs. I'm the CEO and I uh, mainly take care of production and sales. I'm the CFO and I manage marketing and finances. Merrick and I both have 50-50 shares in the company. Our goal is to uh, provide quality smoked meat to everyone. And uh, Avery loves to cook. I love to cook. So we thought we'd come together, support the Canadian beef producers, and form this business. We want to bring everybody together with one intent, eating amazing food. Silver Spur's menu is designed simple to ensure quality over quantity and make sure that every visit is as memorable as the first. We handpick only the finest triple A beef ribs produced by Canadian beef producers. As you can see here on our menu, for just $20, you can build your own beef rib. We start with a large beef rib smoked to perfection, slathered in your choice of one of our four house-made sauces, served with your choice of side, such as coleslaw, tater tots, or macaroni salad. We also have a variety of soft drinks for you to enjoy with your meal. We know that you'll love Silver Spur sauces so much so that just for $15 you can take a bottle home today so you can have Silver Spur in your kitchen. So we want to create a rustic atmosphere. We want to go to the urban centers and we want to give a little bit of country living to everyone. So we're going to roll up. We're going to have our truck and our trailer. We're going to set up standing tables so you don't have to walk away from the food truck. You can enjoy your food right here. And we're going to set up rope and dummies because I know you guys have watched all five seasons of Yellowstone and everybody in the city wants to be a cowboy now. So we'll have that set up and uh, we'll have country music playing in the background. We primarily operate out of Lethbridge in Calgary. Uh, however, give us a call and we'd love to come to your special events. So we'll do uh, bull sales, weddings, anniversaries, uh, whatever you'd like. We'll come to her. Now that you know a little bit about us, here's what we need to get smoking. First off, we need a loan for $50,000. This will help with any of our startup costs, including the purchase of a trailer, smoker, and other kitchen equipment. Secondly, we need help with marketing. Merrick and I both know that the food truck industry is extremely competitive, and we need your help to formulate a strong marketing strategy to get our name out to the customers. Okay, so we're not a... Uh specifically targeting one age group not all ages are discriminated against but we want to hit that uh lunch rush so like i said we'll be downtown calgary we want to be hitting the city centers where the lawyers the accountants the businessmen and women are out and uh, they want to fill their bellies or we're going to hit the industrial park in lethbridge uh we you know welders plumbers mechanics anybody who uh wants to fill their belly and have a big old beef rib they can get on in there and then the weekend warriors we want to be at the like your county fairs, the rodeos. We want to be out where uh, people want to come and gather and have something to enjoy all together. Um, and uh, like I said, again, for our special events, you just call us and we'll come and uh, do it up for you. We are planning on marketing our product through several platforms. Firstly, word of mouth marketing and personal networks. Merrick and I are both very involved with our communities and we are hoping that this will allow us to get hired out for several events such as rodeos and other community events. Secondly, we are planning on pl printing off and plastering posters all over the cities that we'll be, we will be traveling to. This will allow our customers to know where we are, where we are parked, as well as which days we will be in the city. Lastly, we will be marketing our product through social media, such as Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. As you can see here on the board, we have an example 
post that we will be using on Instagram to draw our customers in. We believe that by using social media will be the best option for us to get our, work, our name out to a large demographic of customers. And we want to see you guys uh, putting on your Instagram stories and doing some TikToks and getting all slathered up in barbecue sauce. We want to have fun with it. We want you guys to hashtag barbecue stain and, you know, embrace it. Uh, we want to see your kids running around with the big honking ribs and sword fighting and causing the parents gray hair like they usually do while enjoying a good meal. Okay, let's jump into finances here. So uh, we're looking in our first year revenue of 500,000 with uh, expenses of 250,000 with a profit of 260,000, bringing us a return on investment of 250%. So I'm gonna break this down. We have a slow season and a busy season. In our, in our busy seasons from May to September, and we're estimating selling 95 plates a day, six days a week, four weeks a month, five months of our section, which is about 11,400 plates. We also accounted for 90% of those people to be uh, purchase drinks and 50% of the people to upgrade their side with 2.5% of them buying barbecue sauce. Um, we're going to wrap and in, go into year two here. You can see everything kind of doubles. And the reason for that is we're going to buy a second food truck cash and we're going to put it on the line. It's going to go uh, north of Calgary, Leduc, um, Edmonton uh, country. And uh, it's not, and uh, so that brings us into the ROI of year two and year three with a 400% in year two and a 510% in year three. And you're probably thinking this is too good to be true. But the truth is with the mobility and targeting the demographic specifically, we can keep those numbers up. The overhead is so low with the food truck and there's uh, fewer risks involved, so. Merrick, I think the only thing that's too good to be true is how delicious these ribs are. All right, so I have a question. Are you ready to smoke with us and are you ready to embrace the barbecue stain on your new shirt? Thank you all for listening. We would now like to open the floor to any questions. Cool. <laughs> no. <laughs> Slow. Okay, so if you're going to the city centers, do you think these lawyers and accountants are going to actually want to get all messy in a barbecue? Probably not, but hey, embrace it if you have it, right? Mackenzie. Uh, so we're exactly in planning on doing this piece, but are you going to connect with uh, maybe producers or how are you planning on doing this? Um, for the most part, we'll try and purchase everything from butcher shops, but uh, like XL or well, Cargill and JBS, the beef ribs isn't something that's put out on like uh, to every local grocery store. It's a very uh, looked over cut of the meat. So we'll be able to outsource a lot of that from the, those guys. Well, thank you for that, uh, Merrick and Avery. That made me way too hungry, but we'll try and keep going. So up next, we got Limitless Beef. Isaac Boonstoppel and Aaron Oliver have put this one together. So, And Merrick stole my mic. So, <laughs> I, Isaac is from a 95 milking cow operation located in Grunthal, Manitoba. Isaac has had a keen interest in his parents' farm from a young age and he has plans of running it in the future. He completed his animal science diploma last year, majoring in dairy, and decided to double dip in agribusiness this year. Aaron is from Pat, er, no, Patricia, Alberta. I was like, I can't believe a town's actually named that. And grew up on a commercial cattle ranch. She has always had an interest in agriculture and has completed a crop technology diploma. She is working in industry and then returning to her family's ranch.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Isaac Boonstoppel. And I'm Erin Olivier. And we're here to introduce to you Limitless Beef. We're a Holstein Wagyu cross operation that strives to bring something new to your plate that will up your barbecue game, and as I like to say, put everyone else's to shame. Now that you're all drooling from last presentation, let's continue the suffering a little bit longer and get into why Wagyu. Wagyu is a type of cow originally bred in Japan. It's known for its extraordinary cuts of meat that are very well marbled. A purebred Wagyu takes 48 months to be mature enough for slaughter and is known to have a smaller carcass size. Holsteins, on the other hand, have a larger frame, but they're a slender choice when it comes to meat production. So when these two breeds are crossed together, it creates a more cost-efficient way to produce Wagyu without ruining the quality and the flavor that we all want. When, the, when this cross is happening, the Holstein genotype allows us to have a more vigorous, large calf at birth, and we have also found that the cuts of meat are larger, but they still have that quality from our, whole, our Wagyu genotype. This gives our customer more bang for their buck, which I hope they would appreciate. This beef is often referred to as snow beef as it melts in your mouth when you take a bite. Limitless Beef will be based out of Granville, Manitoba as a second dairy op enterprise to my home dairy farm, Triley Farms. We've seen this as a good way to go home to the family farm and contribute for myself anyways. Uh, when these, we will start this operation off by inseminating lower producing Holsteins or lower genomically tested Holsteins from dairy farmers around the area. Once these calves are on the ground, we will raise them for 27 months to market weight where we will get them butchered and we would like to market them ourselves for a higher return on investment. We have identified that our main competition in the industry is going to be regular beef, poultry, and beyond meat or vegan alternatives. However, we believe we're set aside from our competitors as we're seeing trends of consumers that are wanting to try or cook fancier, high-quality types of meat for their enjoyment or experience. Our goals with Limitless Beef is to let our customer base know that the products they're receiving are raised locally and to the highest industry standards. We also want to build connections in industry so we can have a bigger market for our products. For Limitless Beef to succeed, we are going to need a few things. We're going to need consumers who are winning, willing to spend the extra money to pay for our premium pro, locally produced products. And second, we're going to need an expert in the industry to help us market our products. And third, we're going to need dairy farmers to partner with so that we can artificially inseminate their cows and get the calves in return. Now that our analysis portion of this business plan is over, let's crunch some numbers. So for 2024 and 2025, we unfortunately do see a loss as we build our business. Uh, in 2024, this is $42,000. And in 2025, this is $59,000. This is due to our initial startup costs, the high cost for Wagyu semen, as well as the increased cost to feed these calves as they're on the ground, as they are quite expensive when they're younger, and we are increasing our animal unit size in the year two. Moving, or as you can see in year, the first two years, there is a revenue. We have started a little bit of a custom hauling just to bring in a little more cash up front so we can pay our upfront bills. Moving along to 2026, year three, we finally see a turnaround of $32,000. This is due to us finally being able to sell our first 10 heifers at 27 months and market them. We see this trend into the future as well as increasing. Thank you for joining us. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, the question was asked, how is this quality compared to a crossbreed of Wagyu and beef or Angus, any other crossbreed? Um, I will answer this. Uh, 
we found that just because of the Holstein frame, it makes it a little bit more worth it to have the bigger frame so you get more marbling. And who doesn't love a bigger cut of steak or a tenderloin? So we find that this gives us an advantage above those other breeds and crossbreeds. Does that answer your question? Yes, Janet. Um, the question was, is how available is the Wagyu semen and what is the cost? I will also answer this. Um, from what we found in our research, uh, we will be breeding twice per year. This will cost us about $3,000 a year for about 20 doses. I can't do the breakdown in my head right now. But uh, it's readily available depending on what quality you're looking. It's There's different stages to the Wagyu, but we found... Um, a guy in Ontario who's also doing uh, this dairy cross, and he is shipping it in from Japan, so we would have one of the higher qualities. That's what the price is so high. Does this answer your question, Janet? Thank you. Oh, Darla. Um, so what we found is it's a roughly around $25 a pound. Um, and you would know the, what the price per steak is? Well, I actually don't, but um, we have, yeah, that's more just like in general, but I did get a hold of um, a meat shop that does sell the guy in Saskatchewan who has a similar project as we do. And I do have those numbers, but I just can't think of them right now, so, okay. Yeah, we can get back to you on that after. So, so thank you. Cole, next year I think you should put a towel back here for these mics. They're pretty wet. <laughs> Our next business plan is Dairy Farm Robot Expansion by Kim Dornabel and Hunter Matter. Kim was raised on a dairy farm in Tilsonburg, Ontario. Dornabel Dairy was established in 2003, shortly after immigrating from their original farm in the Netherlands. The farm milks 250 crossbred dairy cows, has been previously a test farm for the new Lely technology. Hunter has a dairy farm 40 minutes west of Montreal in Ontario. He grew up on his family farm alongside his grandparents, parents, and uncle. HMG Farms milks a total of 300 cows. Their family plans to implement robots into their farm in the near future. Can you imagine milking three times a day, three hours each milking? Your whole body's sore, and you're always worrying if your milkers will show up. Well, not anymore. Once we implement robots into HMG's barn, no more sore body and no more worrying if your milkers are going to show up. I'm Hunter. This is Kim. And this is our HMG robot expansion. H&G Farms. I'm the third generation on this farm. My grandparents, dad and uncle, came here from Austria in 1986 and started this farm. We currently milk 200 cows on a double 12 herringbone de Laval parlor. We're located in Lancaster, Ontario. So why robots? So the biggest problem that HMG Farms faces is its labor. Um, not being able to find reliable labor or not even being able to find labor in general. So if we install robots, we no longer have to worry about finding milkers. The second reason why we'd want to get robots, robots is it's more efficient and better for the cows. So the cows can actually decide when they want to be milked, how many times a day they want to be milked. And this can differ for every cow. The 
Third reason why we'd want robots is it's kind of the way of the future. So a lot of studies have shown that robots is the way to go. And there's been a lot of positive results with putting robots into existing parlor facilities. We've decided to implement the DLL VMS 310s. These are some of the newer robots on the market. They have an efficient system. They're durable. We have close service providers. They live about 30 minutes away from us. So that's nice to have. You're able to do manual milking at the press of a button. You're able to take the milkers and put them on the cow. And then we also have index heifer or cows. So this means you're able to put a little bit of a squeeze on the cows or heifers to prevent them from moving, which will allow the robot to have easier access to the teats. And there's also a herd nav option, but that's expensive. So we decided to go with just the robots. So who are our customers? So clearly our customers would be our cows. So our cows would be really happy with this new system since they can yeah, decide when they want to be milked and they no longer have to wait in a holding area in order to be milked. So now they can just get up, go to the milk robot, get milked, go chew their cut again, go lay down, go back to the robot again at, at their own pace. So it's kind of nice. Project need. For this project, we're going to need a loan of $1.3 million from the bank. We're going to need four robots. Each robot can house about 50 to 60 cows. Our barn, we're able to house 300 cows in the current barn. So we'll have two extra pads so we can put two robots in the future if we decide to expand. And then we're also going to need great service providers. We have a history dealing with De Laval. We've dealt with them for a numerous amount of years and they've been good to us, so we're going to continue our relationship with them. Let's look at financials. For year one, we're going to have a revenue of $98,000. This is because there's going to be a three-month decrease in milk production because we're going from three milkings to robots and lots of farms do two milkings to robots. Each robot, well, they do like three milkings. So once we reach the fourth month, they'll be producing as much as the parlor was. And then by about the eighth month, the robots will be producing eight to 10% more milk with the cows. So we'll have expenses at $93,000. This is from increased feed costs from feeding pellets in the robots. We'll also have increase in electricity. And we're going to have a profit of $5,000 in the first year a cash flow of 54,000 and an ROI of 4%. In year two, we're gonna have revenue of $270,000 because the whole year we're gonna have the cows increase milk production eight to 10% compared to the parlor. So the whole year we'll be having an increase in milk production. And then for expenses, we're gonna have $97,000. We have a one year warranty on the robots. So we're gonna have an extra cost of repairs and maintenance. And the same with year one, increased feed costs, electricity. And then we're going to have a profit of $173,000, a cash flow of $184,000, and an ROI of 14%. So as far as the marketing goes for our business plan, we have decided that we would like to advocate for the dairy industry. So there's a lot of common misconceptions with the way that we treat our cows. And providing are the... So, the public with um, barn tours will allow the public to come see our barn, see how happy our cows are, and have the chance to ask questions for any of the any clarifications that they may need with the misconceptions, as well as we could do weekly social media posts. So this could even just simply be a video of us doing something in the barn, like a, just a common practice that the public may not know about. So that's something that we could further teach them as well as even decals on our cars. So that will just show like looking for that blue sticker when you're shopping for your milk products. So now we'd like to open the floor to any questions. Well, we'll probably be, the question was how we were going to transition the cows and how 
to get them yeah. used to robots. There's um, genetics, like robot ready gene. So there's that, that kind of helps them be calm in the robot and like they're kind of ready. We can also, for heifers, we'll put them through while they're heifers just to kind of get them used to the robot. So once they're cows, they kind of know. And like whenever we first transition, the cows will just kind of have to go out a couple times a day and shove cows through ones that have been away for more than eight to 12 hours or more. Uh, it's like 15 years usually, but lots of people will replace them after 15 years, but they can go until they break pretty much, but it's around 15 years. Uh, there should be some, like, I'm not really sure on that answer, but there, there should be some. Uh, so in year one, we're going to have 67,000. This is because we're going to keep the parlor until like every single cow is going in the robot consistently. So we'll just kind of have it if there's any cows and we'll cull those cows and sell them if they never get used to the robot. And then in the second year, we'll have $70,000 in labor savings because this is, we're not having any milkers. So the first year, it's just the first month, we'll still have some milkers. <laughs> Up next, we got the Spurs renovation by Emily Roth and Mat Matricia Clark. We're just looking for a mic. We had another. I got the mic. <laughs> okay, I'm getting all my steps in. <laughs> um, Emily is from a mixed cattle and grain farm just south of Daysland, Alberta. As an agribusiness student striving to maintain a better student life, for all the other students here at Lakeland College, she thought the business improvement of the student standard spurs would help. Matresa lives near Ont it's like Ontario with an A, <laughs> Altro, Alberta, on a mixed grain and cattle farm. With her passion for agriculture, she applied for agribusiness and is eager to help improve spurs. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Emily Roth, and this is my business partner, Matresa Clark, and this is Spurs, the on-campus student center located right here on the Vermilion Lakeland, Lakeland College campus. Uh, it is currently accessible to all Lakeland students and staff for lounging and attending special events uh, held by the Students Association or us agribusiness classes. Um, for this presentation, we have imp implemented ideas to further upgrade uh, spurs and create a more uh, efficient, enjoyable, and overall successful student uh, center for the students here. Now, before we get uh, into it, we'll provide a little bit of a background here um, of how spurs was originally created. So it was uh, formed back in 2015 by agribusiness students for their business plan with the help of interior design people our uh, classmates and uh, in the middle is the original design on the top is their daytime plan floor plan the bottom is their nighttime floor plan um, it is pretty accurate to what it looks like now besides the tables and chairs on the outside patio um, but basically it was originally created as a cafe and bar but business did not uh, take as well as they had hoped and now it is currently uh, just ran as a bar and gets business pretty much a couple days uh, a week. And But ever since it's been created, we've had some pretty good uh, student experiences there, having 
Halloween parties, whiteboard parties, you name it. It's been pretty fun. And I myself have, have had a pretty good experience here as well. Who has um, been at Spurs before? Who had to wait in line to get to an event that you may or may not have gone in? I know I have. We want to fix that issue by increasing the capacity by expanding Spurs. We want to also include creating more business and customer growth, delivering superior customer service, and enhancing socialization. Um, we also want to get, allow people to experience equality entertainment um, with the relaxing environment that Spurs offers and give student opportunities to come and meet new friends and possibly have a job. After discussing with our peers and mentors, we have gathered that our number one issue that we face with Spurs is the limited capacity of the number of people allowed inside the building, which is only a capacity number of 182, which doesn't seem like a lot of people with this building. And, and it kind of, it, it really sucks when you, uh, when you're at a, when you want to go to a the band in the sand kickoff party and you're waiting in line and all your friends are in there, just it's so close yet so far you just can't get in. Um, I know myself, I've experienced where I've had to wait in line in the cold and it's, it's just not fun. So we do want to increase the capacity by at least allowing 80 more people inside, maybe a higher number if so. And to further make this project a success, we do need some further customer input by you guys, the audience. And uh, with that, uh, with that, feel free to join us later at Spurs to get an experience firsthand of the business itself before this operation um, or this expansion occurs. And furthermore, we also do need a new building design. Hopefully with the help of interior design students, we can get a new floor plan layout of Spurs to help with this expansion, uh, implementing our idea of uh, expanding further west towards the student parking lot, um, discarding that outside patio in general because it's not really used a lot, a lot of the time in, in the winter. And finally, once the expansion is complete, we do need to implement new marketing tactics to further promote this business and really grow the upgraded um, or the popularity popularity of the upgraded uh, Spurs business. With this service, we are targeting Lakeland College students with the focus of helping them get out of the comfort zone, and enhancing socialization. Um, we want to um, ha create a welcoming environment for the Lakeland alumni and the staff here on campus to come during the events and during the day while we try to implement a restaurant. Um, we will support local business and give students an opportunity to work part-time here at Spurs, which is walking distance from their dorms. And as you can see, that is the, the current Spurs and what it looks like. Um, so we do want to use social media as a main marketing uh, tool to broadcast this upgrade. And we really want to target our young college student audience, so using Instagram, uh, Snapchat, Facebook, we will be targeting those people and uh, giving weekly updates of special events and stuff like that. And we will also be using word of mouth marketing to give a positive word around campus to the students and staff. And we will also be selling merchandise. And um, Teresa has the current Spurs hoodies. You may have seen them around. They're pretty nice, they're pretty comfortable. Uh, we do have ideas of selling hats, um, hoodies, or not hoodies, uh, uh, t-shirts, sweatpants, uh, etc. And finally, we also will be creating a new and improved food and drink menu. Uh, on the far side is a visual of our general regular bar menu, which has uh, new products from um, local businesses that we would like to collaborate with here in Vermilion. And on this side is the weekly specials menu that we uh, crafted up for this presentation, uh, which has a Wing Monday, Taco Tuesday, a Wine Wednesday, and a Thirsty Thursday, because as college students, we, uh, we really like our Thirsty Thursdays. The local businesses we would like to collaborate with here in Vermilion is the Copper Cork Distillery, the Old School Cheesery, and the Prairie Bake Shop and Bistro. With the Bake Shop and Distillery, we would like to add 
their food and beverage items to the menu we've created, while also having an idea of hosting future events like a wine and cheese using the products from the old school, old school cheesery. Now, finally, with our finances, we projected that with year one, uh, it will relatively remain the same of how the business is currently doing, but with the added uh, loan proceeds and building costs. So with a revenue of 75,000 expenses of 42,000, a net income of 33,000 and a return of investment of 88%. Uh, and then with that year, year two frame, we uh, estimate that that's when the uh, expansion will kind of complete. So we guess that beginning of the school year for year two, not a ton of business, but by the end of the school year, we will gain some revenue with an $85,000 revenue and a return of investment of 35% with a net income of 40,000. And with year three, we, with the increase of promotion, marketing, and really gaining that popularity with the, with the students on campus, we want to, we project that the revenue will increase with uh, 135,000 and a net income of 92,000 and a return of investment of 159%. Um, so that, bar, that QR code in the corner is just a, leads to a Google Forms. You could go on it and give us some feedback if you've ever been to Spurs. And if you've never been to Spurs, again, feel free to come by later and then give us some feedback. And then uh, we would also like to thank uh, Carrie and Brayden, for the current manager and executive director of Spurs, for helping us with this plan. And thank you for taking the time to listen. Are there any questions? Well, we really, well, we want to use social media first. And with that first year students, um, I guess we want to uh, kind of broadcast it more with through like the Lakeland app or again, just word of mouth marketing, just really get the word out there and get, yeah, mainly target the, the first year students. Um, because a lot of them don't really know what Spurs is all about, and uh, we want to get them knowledgeable, and yeah. Any more questions? Oh. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we want to open daily hours, like daily school hours, especially. Um, and we do, we do get the opportunity for students to have a job at Spurs, but we are open for uh, people off campus to work there as well. But yeah, with the, with the, um, with the implemented restaurant that we want to add to Spurs, we do want to have... Um, more daytime hours open. Thank you. Okay, we're only going to make you guys sit for a little bit longer. This is our last one, but not, not least, though. <laughs> this is B&B &B Farmhands, and it is presented by Breeze Kristen and Brianna Mason. Breeze is from a small town in Saskatchewan and is really excited to tell you about her new equipment attachment, the seed pulley. Brianna is from Westlock, Alberta, where she grew up on a mixed cattle and grain operation. She took a year off before coming to Lakeland, where she worked at the alfalfa plant in Legal, Alberta. This is where she plans to return after she graduates.
Their idea came from a man out of Dormy, Saskatchewan, who has built one of these attachments already, Alan Dupy. They thought this was a perfect pitch for their business plan. You really seem to be struggling carrying that bag of seed. Aw, oh, man, am I ever. Well, good thing b, b Farmhands has a solution for you with our seed lift. I'm Brianna Meston. And I'm Breeze Kristen. And we are the 50-50 owners of b, b Farmhands. Our company. So we realized growing up on farms, working in the farming community, that farmers struggle. They have a lot to do, and they do a lot of work. So we want to ease the life of farmers. Our mission for B&B Farmhands is to take the load off the producer's back by enhancing their older farm equipment. Before we get into this video, <laughs> I'd just like to thank Alan. So um, here's the seed pulley in action. Just push a button and then the lift comes down. Put your seed bag on there and lift it back up. Probably the hardest thing this guy's about to do is walk up and down these ladders, <laughs> this ladder. So then you get up to the top, open it up where he's going to dump in the seed, close it back up, and come down the stairs. And push the button to bring your seed bag back down so that you're not littering, Noel. <laughs> and that's the video. This is sped up, so it does take a little bit longer than that. But Our project needs, seeing as we're a new company, we don't have contacts like other people in industry. So we need to find someone who would be able to find us those contacts and find people who would be willing to buy our seed lift. We would also need material. Our seed lift is all made out of metal, so we need someone, a reliable supplier. And we need man manpower. Neither me or Breeze are welders. We could try, but our lift would not be as reliable as we want it to be. So we need someone who can weld and make a reliable product so that we are selling to our customers. Getting into our customers, um, we're mainly looking towards um, people with older equipment as the newer equipment has these attachments already kind of built onto them. Um, as well as women in egg, we like to be strong and show people how strong we are, but sometimes it's nice to take that load off your back. Um, the next would be the age ranges of 35 to retirement as they're getting a little bit older. And again, take that load off your back when you can. Next, we'll be getting into the price that you'd be paying for that new equipment. And again, it's mainly only on the new equipment. This is the Burgo Air, um, Air Cart, and you'd be looking at a price of about $750,000 in Canada and $556,000 US. So ask yourself the question, who would want to spend $750,000 when you can update your old equipment and only pay $3,800 per unit for our product? So looking at the finances, year one, we will be able to sell 25 units. That gives us an ROI of 96%, seeing as me and Breeze are only putting in $10,000 of our own. Year two, we'll sell 10 more for 35 sales projected, and our ROI does drop. That's just because we don't have any more owner's contributions. We won't be contributing anything in year two. And then year three, we will be able to sell 50 units, and our ROI starts climbing again to 71%. So next we'll be getting into marketing. Of course, we'll have our website here. It'll show all of our products that we have available, which we'll also be including hoodies, shirts, and sweatpants, just to get our logo out there, people wearing them, people seeing our name. Um, so just we're not that small business anymore. Um, it does have that description of our seed lift as well as all the prices. And over on the my left-hand side, uh, is our Instagram, which both um, will be linked. Website will be linked to your Instagram and Instagram to our website. This will be showing uh, what trade shows we're going to, when we're going to be there, and any new updates that we have. Like I said, we're going to trade shows. We're going to also try to get into some auction houses, so um, offering our attachment as an extra um, for an extra fee with people that buy air carts or anything like that. Um, we'll also be selling our hoodies and sweats and shirts at our uh, trade shows as well. Uh, 
At our trade shows, we plan to have four decals leading from the entrance to our booth. We'll start with that guy uh, at the top there, and hopefully by the time that you get closer and closer to our booth, you'll end up looking like that guy there at the bottom. And our last form of marketing would be word of mouth. We want to be popular at the coffee table with the farmers, not in Hollywood. We decided since we were looking for someone to spend time with us in our company, it is good to take a look at our risks. When we look at our risks, most of these can be mitigated by our product need. So our first biggest risk is not having the customers. We're targeting a very niche market of people with that older farm equipment. So that goes back to our product need of finding someone who can help us find the contacts of people who would be willing to buy our product. Our second biggest risk is if we can't make it to those trade shows. We're relying on those for a big piece of our marketing. So we're going to have to do whatever we can to make it to as many of those trade shows so that people get to know who we are, get to know our product and know our name. And then our third risk is supplier issues. Seeing as our product is all metal, as I said before, we need someone who is reliable and can get us that metal at a reasonable price so that we can sell our product. Any questions? Yep. Yeah, I'm sure it probably could. I don't know how, how much this thing can lift. I'd have to ask Alan if he knows, but I could get, get back to you if you come to Spurs. Anything else? Ethan? <laughs> it's taking the load off your back. You're not going to be... We don't 23 wanna, years old with a broken yeah, back, it's going to save your back. We don't want to be 20 years old acting like we're 50, so. <laughs> Sorry, it is That's okay. <laughs> Well, thanks everyone for coming out. We invite everyone to join us at Spurs for a celebration or if you have any other questions. And that's going to do it. Let's give a round of applause for all our presenters. And also would like to say thanks to Cole and Darla because I know they put a lot of effort into this and the two judges that came out too to judge all everyone's presentations.